Excel has a lot of new functions, but by far Biro is my most favorite one. In this video, let me show you what this amazing function does and share an incredibly powerful lookup trick using the Biro formula. Let's take a look at this. So here I have got some teams and their scores in 10 rounds of some sort of a competition. And we would like to calculate what is the total score, what is the minimum score in any of the 10 rounds for each team and what is the maximum score. Now normally we would do something like sum and select this entire range and then you would just drag this down, you'll get the team totals. You could do the same for men and max as well. But these formulas are a bit manual and if we don't know how far down this data goes, then we will need to drag this down or pre-write these formulas which creates all sorts of headaches. So this is where Biro comes in. What Biro does is it applies consistent logic for every row of your data. So this is how I'm going to use it. You can see that by has two functions. We have got by column and by row. So in this case, we are going to use by row, but whatever I'm explaining works the same way for by call as well. So we're going to say by row and open bracket and select the array. The array in this case would be this entire range. And what we want is for every row, we want a same formula to be applied. In this case, that formula happens to be sum. So we simply say sum, close bracket, and what we will get is individual sums for every row automatically filled down. Now, how amazing is this? Just look at it. We give an entire range, Biro automatically spills down all the totals. We could do the same for min. We can say by row, select this entire range, comma min, close bracket, and we'll get the minimums for everybody, which happens to be either five or six. Let's do the same for max by row max. Again, we'll get tens or nines, whatever is the highest score across the 10 rounds. Now you could see that while this functionality in itself is somewhat useful, it's not really groundbreaking or new. We could already do this with sums or mins or maxes before. So at this point, most of you, including me, are not overwhelmed or impressed by Biro. And that's my initial reaction when I came across this function. I'm like, meh, this does fine, but I could do without it. Then I got thinking, wait a sec, let's observe closely what else can I put here? So you can see that we have got all the usual suspects like sum, average, median, count, etc. But we can also, if you see all the way at the bottom, Lambda. What Lambda lets you do is it lets you build custom logic on your own to apply for every row of your data. So I'm going to show you how we can use these lambdas and do a really powerful, almost impossible lookup trick using Biro. So first, let's take a take closer look at the lambda itself. For example, if I want to mimic the total functionality with lambda, this is how I could do. I could say Biro, select this array comma and instead of writing sum we, we are going to say lambda and what this lambda gets is for each row it gets that row itself so we can declare that as r or row uh, this is just a temporary variable the holding variable that is passed down by by row so lambda row and what we want is we want the sum of that row itself close bracket close bracket close bracket and essentially the row itself would be for each row of this array will be the row itself and then sum will add that up. So we'll get the same numbers. For example, for some reason, whatever reason, you don't want to sum the everything, you just want to sum the first four columns of the data alone. So even though there is a lot, we just want to take the first four values and sum it up. So I could change my lambda here, instead of saying sum row, I could say sum of, instead of row, take row, the variable, comma four. So it's going to take the first four values of that row and then pass that on to sum and we'll just add those extra brackets. Once you add those extra brackets, I was thinking it's going to give me the first four values total. So in this case, it should be six plus seven plus seven plus five. So 25. But what I got is 64. That's because what take does is it actually takes in rows, whereas our data is in the row. So we need to take in columns. 
So I'll just need to change the parameter here to comma four and we will get that as 25. So now that you understand what this Lambda can do, let's take a look at a real world scenario where Biro would be incredibly helpful. So here is the actual data that I have. And let's say I have got these teams and I know who the members of these teams are. So for example, Office Outlaws has Dwight, Michael, Jim and Pam in that team. Friendly Faces has Ross, Chandler, Monica, Rachel, etc. And I want to do a reverse lookup. That means if I look up for, for example, Lily, I would like to know what is the name of the team itself. So you can see that the lookup is a big challenge because we don't know which column to look in. We have to look in this entire range and find the person that we are looking for and then return the team itself. Now, in order to do something like this, you may have to set up some helper columns or give up your hands and throw it up in there and then say, okay, I just can't do it like this. I'll have to you know, change the structure of this data or whatever. But Biro can do this easily. So let me show that. So here is the formula. I have already written it. I'll just test it for now. If I search for Kramer, I'm getting the team name as Parking Garage F because here you can see Kramer is in this team, Parking Garage F. Now, how do we write this formula? So here is the formula. I'll just uh, show this to you. It looks a little bit big, but it's not that big. And I'm going to show, explain the whole thing to you. What we want is for each row of this data, we want to look up this value. So for each row by row, we want to ask the question in that row, does this value appear? So for example, if I just take the case of first row, looking at this, these four people, if I'm saying by row, the by row will give me these four values. Actually, it's going to give me all these blank values as well. Once these values are there, we are going to ask the question to by row. Hey, does Kramer appear anywhere in this row? If so, I want the count of that value, which would be one or zero. So for example, if I do a count of Kramer in that row, that would be zero. And it continues like that for all of these guys until we hit this row here, which does have Kramer right here. So that count is going to be one and we will end up with an array of zeros or ones. Hopefully there is only one one. And then we do a lookup on that array to find where that one is and then return the corresponding parking garage. So that's how I've constructed that formula. Let's build that from scratch right here. So we're going to say X lookup. What do we want to look up? Look up one because we are looking for the one and lookup array would be instead of a physical array, we are going to pass by row as the lookup array. So what this by row is going to do is by row is going to scan or observe this entire range. And for each row, it's going to apply a Lambda. The Lambda is going to internally get the row. And then the Lambda is going to basically do a count ifs on the row with what we are looking up for. So essentially it's going to count how many times Kramer has appeared in that row. It will be pretty much zero for everybody except the parking garage F people. And that Lambda, when it is done, and when the biro is finished its job, it's going to return a bunch of zeros and ones. And once it find a one, we want to return the team name. So close brackets and we will end up with parking garage F. This is because we are looking for Kramer and the biro is going to look to its magic, find all the zeros and ones and then she. I'm going to just take this internal bit. When I hover my mouse on that, you can see that it has returned actually a bunch of zeros and a single one. So that's what that biro is doing. And then this is doing its bit. Now let's test this. If I try to find Jake, I'm going to get 99 not out. And if I look for Phil, who's in Modern Madness, we'll get that team. And if I look for myself, Chandu, I'm not in any of these. So I'll get the same result with the XLOOKUP when the value is not there get NA. I can alternatively also give what to do when the value is not found by using this if not found option. But the real hero here is the by row function. And like I said earlier, the same can be applied for by call as well. So whatever I have explained, both by row and by call have the same behavior. By row would do by row, whereas by call, as the name suggests, will give you a consistent operation for each column of the data. So both of these are amazing functions to process 
tables of data, which happens to be the case in Excel anyway, and gives us some really powerful tools to deal with all sorts of data shenanigans or miseries that, that are thrown at us. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you do like the Biro function, let me know what is it, what is the favorite part of it for you in the comments. And don't forget to like this video and share it with a friend who could use some of this Biro magic in their lives. I'll catch you again somewhere else. Bye.